How's it going guys? It's Diego from the Foot and Fist Sports Network and before I start this video off, I just want to say, if you hear some annoying ass noises, some weird noises in the background, it's my fucking cat. He's horny as fuck, he's like 8 months old, so he's essentially a 13 year old boy who just discovered his balls for the first time, and he is really, really, really pissing me off. Uh, so I apologize for that, but... What I'm going to talk about right now is Manchester United winning the EFL Cup and Jose Mourinho officially becoming the first manager in Manchester United history to win a trophy in his first season in charge. Now, don't get me wrong, there haven't been a ton of uh, successful managers following Sir Alex Ferguson. David Moyes was an absolute joke and Louis van Gaal, sure he did win an FA Cup, but he didn't really do anything worth note, no, uh, worth noting. So, you know, it makes sense for Jose Mourinho, considering how good he is as a manager. He's won, what, 40-something trophies in his career. I think it's like 44 or 45 after the winning today. Um, and the fact that, you know, he has such a great team. He has he spent so much money over the summer. So it really did make sense for him to be the first manager, especially considering the fact that he is in so many competitions. And he's still in the running for the Europa League. He's still in the running for a top-four spot. And he's still in the running for an FA Cup. So overall, it might not be the best season, but it could, at the end of the day, be a pretty good one and this is a big step for Manchester United because if you look at our team there are quite a few players there that don't really have a lot of experience in winning trophies. I mean, even Ander Herrera, who's been there for a few years, he doesn't really have a lot of experience winning trophies. There's a lot of young players in there. Jesse Lingard comes to mind, Marcus Rashford. There's just a lot of players there who are up and coming, or at least have been in the, only been in the first team for about a year, year and a half. So they have to start getting that winning mentality. They won the FA Cup last season. They won the Community Shield at the start of this season. And now they have won the EFL Cup. So they're starting to build a winner's mentality. They're starting to realize what it takes to win titles, what it means well, to win trophies. This isn't a title, but it's still a big cup. So this is important. They're starting to win, build up that winning mentality. And having a player like Zlatan there, who I like what they said on the broadcast on Sky Sports today. They were talking about how this really, Zlatan has the sort of kind of character, charisma that Roy Keane and Eric Cantona have. They are the type of players that make the people around them better. And that is exactly what these young players need. They need somebody to build themselves off of and really the sort of get their energy from when times are getting rough. Because if you look at how brutal Man United's schedule has been lately, it's really, really frightening. I mean, not frightening isn't like, oh my god, they're going to die. But it's like, compared to other teams, in particular, it's like a team like Southampton, who, if I'm not mistaken, had two weeks off um, before this game. That's just, it's, in a way, it's unfair, because they're playing so many games. I think they played nine games just this month, and it's insane. It's insane. They played in the Europa League Wednesday they played in the final today. Then they have, what is it? I think they tr they travel to Russia on Thursday. They just have such a compact schedule, and they're playing some really important games. And for them to have won so many of these, or at least to not have lost at all, pretty much, other than that one game, which was against Hull, that really didn't really matter, is actually really, really good. Because, I mean, when you have such a compact schedule, a lot of times the energy isn't there, and you drop a lot of points. And it really does show how good Jose Mourinho has been as a manager, but most importantly, how good our our team is from a depth point of view. In the, in the previous years, we probably would have lost at least a few of those games just because the team spirit wasn't there. But right now, it really does seem like this is the Manchester United that we used to see, especially because Jose Mourinho is really playing the style of football that Man United fans want to see. So that was a really, really, really positive thing. And uh, I don't want to seem like I'm just talking too... I'm, I'm blindly uh, confident in how great Man United are. I'm, I most certainly am not. Because make no mistake about it, Southampton should have got that win. Well, not really get the win, but they should have gotten at least a draw. They were the better team by far on the day. The difference is they do not have players like Zlatan. They don't have great players like Martial, who at the just like that can really, really change a game, especially when you're not playing well. As good as Manolo Gabbiadini is, the guy who they signed from Napoli. I've been watching him for a long time, and I was really, really surprised that Napoli sold him, especially because, you know, being in Italy, he's one of those guys that have been talked about for such a long time, and he's actually nicknamed Spider-Man because of how amazing he is, how, how accurate he is from finding the top corners. And it was really surprising for them, for, in my opinion, to see Napoli sell him. And that was a great buy from Southampton. He's, what, got five goals in his last three games. And realistically, he should have three, uh, six goals, excuse me, because of the fact that they um, they disallowed his first goal, which was clearly onside. However, it does make sense for the side, for the, for the side referee to make that mistake because of the fact that Redmond, who was a little bit farther ahead of him, it did, they pretty, he overlapped pretty much the wrong time. And the sideline ref was just a little bit distracted by that and signed the uh, the offsides and it was a shame for Southampton obviously not a sign, not a shame for me 
But I have to give respect to Southampton. They went out there. They really, really took advantage of the fact that they were fresh and United were very fatigued. They went out there. They went at them as hard as they could. And realistically, they could have gotten a result. They should have gotten a result. And at the end of the day, I have to have a lot of respect for Southampton. I have actually had a lot of respect for them over the years because they're one of those teams that they sell their best players, but they continually they continue to build and they continue to be strong. It's just shocking, especially with their good manager right there, that they have right now. They really do look like a team who, in the coming years, if they can keep their best players and stop sort of uh, selling every time they get a really good player, then they could do something very, very spectacular in the future. And who knows, they might even be in the Europa League. I think they, they got knocked out of the group stage this season. And that was a big shame because of the fact that they, do, they really could have gotten a bit farther. I would say that they were definitely a last 16 level team at least. And that would have been nice to see them get there just because of the fact that I like a lot of their players. I like the way they play and they they have some amazing fans. I mean, if you look at some of their, their games... They really have probably, I would say, the best fans uh, from a noise point of view with what they have. I mean, they have a, like half the size stadium of Old Trafford, and they make double the noise. At least that's what it seems like. I've never been there in person, but on TV, and based on how just even at the Wembley today, every time United would start singing, it would it seemed like all of a sudden Southampton would just take over and just get a little bit louder than them. And it was just... It's just how they are. That's something you have to do. Um, you have to give credit to with Southampton. With Southampton, they have some amazing, um, amazing fans, and they really should have deserved something a bit more. I would probably, they probably should have deserved at least go to extra time. But at the end of the day, when you have players like Zlatan, who just like that can really turn something out of nothing, turn something uh, around out of nothing, like a player like Martial, who. It looked, like, it looked like to me like he completely fucked up that situation with that third goal, but he somehow managed to find, uh, I think it was Rashford on the side, I can't remember. I think it was Rashford on the side, or maybe Lingard. Put in, no, it was Lingard. Put in a beautiful ball for Ibra, and it was just, when you put Ibra in that position, he does not miss, especially right now. He's He really looks, he really does look like a machine, and I'm pretty tired, so pardon my, uh, my stuttering. He really does look like a machine. 26 goals in February, well, at the end of February, is massive, especially because he's 34, almost 35 years old, and at the beginning of the season, everybody was talking about how there was no way in hell he was going to be able to to hit these kind of these type of numbers in the Premier League in his first season, or at least in English football in general. And you have to say, Zlatan Ibrahimovic is one of the best strikers to ever grace the Premier League and ever grace the world, ever grace the sport. He is hitting, he is continuously hitting the highest numbers possible in each league. He's not like Leo Messi, who, as amazing as Leo Messi is, he's only done those types of thing in La Liga. There's a lot of players like that. You know, even Cristiano Ronaldo, he only did it in the Premier League and La Liga. But at the end of the day, the Premier League is where it's at. If you can do that stuff like that in the Premier League and and everywhere else, then that it means that you are amazing. And for Ibra to dominate Serie A, to dominate La Liga, to well, sort of dominate La Liga, he didn't really have a fair chance. But still then, he scored a lot of goals for Barcelona. To dominate the French League, to now dominate the Premier League, and have to also to have also dominated the the Dutch league, it just shows that Zlatan Ibrahimovic from the start of his career to almost the end of his career has consistently been a hard worker and has always been a goal machine. And you cannot discount that. You have to give the guy credit. He is an absolute legend of a player. And I hope to see him at United for the next uh, for next season as well because it looks like he might leave if they don't make it to the Champions League. So I hope the God that we do make it to the Champions League. Obviously, Champions League is the goal at the, at the end of the day. But still... We need to keep a player like Zlatan because he is a huge, 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 huge part of this locker room. And without him, we would lose a big thing. And sure, it might look like Griezmann might be coming over, but at the end of the day, a player like Zlatan is invaluable. You have to have a player like that because he brings the energy to the team when things simply are not going their way. So that's it for that's it for the video, guys. I'm, a, I'm too tired to really go into a... A, a deep analysis of it, but I hope you enjoyed it. This is going to be a great week of sports. At the end of the week, we have UFC 209, which is headlined. Uh, who headlines that? Card? Who headlines that? Oh yeah. Um, God damn it. Tony Ferguson versus Khabib Nurmagomedov is the co-main event, and the main event is fuck. I can't remember it. Anyway, it's a good card. Uh, there's going to be a lot of sports to talk about now. Uh, this Thursday, there's the Europa League, the Champions League. I think. The, the other ties are this week, if I'm not mistaken. There's Real Madrid. No, maybe that's the week after that. Anyway, there's a lot of sports to talk about this week. So that's it for the video, guys. Make sure you tune in. I will be covering all the things I, I just mentioned. 
all the subjects about mixed martial arts and stuff like that, make sure you check that out. And I apologize for forgetting what UFC 209's main event is. Oh yeah, that's right, Wonderboy Thompson and Tyrone Woodley. That's going to be one sick fucking fight. The first fight was pretty good, and I think this one's going to be even better. So make sure you check out my content for that. I'm going to do previews. I'm going to do the fight fallout after the fight, after the event. And I'm just going to I'm gonna go balls deep in this one, alright? I'm going to go really, really deep on this one. So make sure you tune into that, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. And make sure you share it anywhere you can, and make sure you subscribe if you are interested in seeing my videos. Guys, I will see you in the next one.